In this section, we're going to cover functions and function notation. Make sure that you have the video worksheet printed off and use it to take notes as you follow along. We start this section with the definition of a function, but before we can get into the formal definition of a function, there are a few things that we need to review. The first is what a relation is. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. The set consisting of the first components of each ordered pair is called the domain. And the set consisting of the second components of each ordered pair is called the range. There are four different ways to represent relations. Those ways are as formulas, graphs, ordered pairs, or by mapping. For example, if you were asked to state the domain and range of the following relation, this is how you would write it. So the domain is defined as the set consisting of the first components of each ordered pair. So notice that they use this word set. So we're going to use set notation to actually denote the domain, which means we're using these little squiggly lines. So again, these were the first components of the ordered pairs. Another way to think about that is that they're the input values. So those values are 1, 3, 2, and 5. So we'll write those down. Now, technically, the order that you write these does not matter. You do not need to put these in numerical order. The range is the set of all of the second components. So those second components are 2, 4, and 4 happens twice, and 1. Now when we write this, I only write 4 one time, even though I see it show up two different places. And that's because, again, this is just the set of all values. So we're just saying that these are the possible output values that this relation takes on. So once I've said that an output value of 4 happens, we don't have to say how many times it happens and re continually repeat it in there. You just write it one time. Now that we've reviewed what a relation is, we can go into the formal definition of a function. So a function is actually a special type of relation, and it's a relation in which each possible input value leads to exactly one output value. The input values make up the domain, and the output values make up the range. So for example, if we looked at three different types of mappings, we can see in this first mapping that every input is going to only one output. So this would be considered a function. Now, notice that this output value was used twice. Both Q and R went to N. But that doesn't mean this isn't a function. If you look at the definition, it's only talking about the input values going to one output value. It doesn't say anything about how many times each output value is used. So again, this is considered a function because for each of these inputs, they're mapped to only one output. Looking at the second example, this would also be considered a function because for each of these input values, they're going to only one output value. However, in this third example, this would not be considered a function. And that's because this input value of Q, it's getting mapped to two different output values. So again, to be a function, for every input, it can only go to one output. Now, throughout these videos, you're going to see these little helpful help icons. These help icons will come up um, whenever we're done with a specific concept. And what I've done for you is I've mapped out 
um, videos from Khan Academy and Patrick JMT that just go into more depth and more examples if you're needing that. You don't need to always review these. If you feel like you've got the concept down, don't feel like you need to put in these extra this extra work. But if you feel like, oh, I think I'm kind of getting this, but I'm not getting this, or I really don't get what she's talking about, this is a great website that I found that I'll, this links out to that go over whatever the specific concept is that we've just talked about. So you can get some more examples. I wanted to do this so that you're not having to spend so much time in this class looking for good quality videos over specific concepts. I've already taken the time to do that. So um, you can spend more time on actually learning the concepts. Now, if you end up needing more than just these, please make sure that you send me an email and I will gladly either meet with you or we can find some more videos that'll help you out. Um, or I can even make some more for you myself. Let's look at another example. Here we have a coffee shop menu that consists of items and their prices. Is price a function of the item? So what we mean by that is when we put in an item number, is there only one price for it? So our input values are considered the items and the output is the price. So whenever you see is something a function of something else, that first thing is always the output values and then the second part is always the input values. So is price a function of the item? So in order to be a function for each input, there's only one output. So for each of these items, is there only one price listed? And the answer to that is yes. If I wanted to order a plain jelly or plain donut, I know the price would be $1.49. If the cashier told me all of a sudden it was $2.49, I would be able to tell them that was not correct because there's only one price for each item. So this is a function. However, if we look at it from the other direction where it says, is the item a function of the price? So now we're looking at our inputs being the price and our outputs being the item. So for example, if I told you I spent $1.99, so my input was price of $1.99, would you be able to tell me what item I bought? And the answer to that would be no. If I look over here, there's two different items that are $1.99. So this $1.99 maps to two different items. So this would not be considered a function. Now, what you're going to see on the next two slides are quiz questions. So once we've done um, a concept, you're going to see a quiz question that'll pop up one or two over it just for you to be able to kind of take a step back and realize, have I learned this concept or have I not learned this concept? Do I know it well enough to move on or do I need to get more practice on it? So use this not as a hoop to jump through where you just keep on trying to guess the right answer, but as a way to really evaluate if you've really learned this concept well enough to move on.